Greetings and salutations everyone, I'm Ekamak, and this is something a little bit new for the channel. Uh, it's not something that I've overly advertised, but back when I was a teenager I was really into the whole Star Wars scene. So when an MMO for Star Wars came out, then of course I got into that. Although I guess specifically the part I was into was Knights of the Old Republic RPGs. And that's what the Old Republic was based on. I did sort of drift away from the game based on some story decisions, but in more recent times I actually got back into the game and I found out that the next update is going to make serious changes to the combat system and not for the best in a lot of people's opinions. So I figured I'd just get some videos out about how it plays at the moment and do uh, some trivia on how it used to be. You know, for nostalgia's sake when everything goes downhill. And what better way to start out than with the Jedi Sentinel. This is uh, one of... So basically the way it worked, it used to work, is this. You had uh, eight classes. Four for the Empire, four for the Republic. And they basically mirrored each other. Each, uh, each base class had its own set of two advanced classes. You'd pick one to promote into and you'd be stuck there forever. And apparently a lot of people didn't like this. They kept saying, look, we want to go into the other advanced class at will. And it got to the point that they said, right, no more base classes. You'll start out in the, the advanced class of your choice. You don't get to change them. But that's probably not the point here. The point here is to show off a few tricks. So this is how it works from the start. You have two resources. You have your focus, which is generated through certain skills to spend on others. And then you have centering, which has several different ways of improving it, but most of it comes from actually using the, using the focus skills. So let's give it a shot. For sleep, gap closer ability. Build some focus and gets you in fast. Strike, basic focus builder ability. Zealous Strike, Sentinel exclusive, only works if you have two lightsabers. Uh, let's just get back into this. It takes a while to charge up, but it yields a lot more focus than the others do. It also inflicts beat down, which increases the damage taken from physical, from melee attacks specifically. Considering that it's there's a the way debuffs work is that there often are several different sources of it that to come out. They don't stack on each other, rather they reapply the duration. So if I were to party up with four other sentinels, then we'd all take advantage of the beatdown effect, but we wouldn't inflict it four times. Once for everyone. And as we can see here, our centering has reached 30, which has lit up a few abilities on the tray. The most basic one is Zen. Generate 4 focus, plus 8 additional focus over the next few seconds. So you see, it had 6 stacks and it slowly reached 0. It's not very interesting, but whatever. Slash is your basic focus spender ability. Nothing too special, but nothing too bad either. Force Sweep is your basic uh, area of effect attack. It actually, get used to it. A lot of abilities have these effects, has extra crowd control effects on weak and standard enemies. It's kind of cool stuff, I guess. If you need to spam an AoE effect though, you have Cyclone Slash over here. It's weaker, it only works in a cone in front of you, but it is spammable. Saber Ward is a personal defensive ability. It increases range, melee and range defenses by 50% and absorb 25% of the damage taken from force and tech attacks. So that's a lot of little things, let's go through it one at a time. Our defense chance is our chance of avoiding the attack outright. 
So by activating the Saber Ward, we've got a, basically a coin flip of avoiding the attack at base level. If the opponent has more accuracy, then it won't be as good in our favour. If the opponent has an accuracy debuff, then it swings into more likely that we're going to dodge. Force Stasis is our crowd control. Subdue the target, stunning it for 4 seconds. It deals damage over the duration and builds focus over the duration. So it's a channeled ability, and it definitely went through a lot of changes over the years because at the start you had to ch it only stunned and dealt damage and built the focus while you were channeling it. So it was actually kind of terrible because it all it didn't just stop your enemy; it also stopped you from doing anything else. A very needed change. Blade Storm has slightly longer range than all our other abilities. It's a force attack, meaning that it bypasses things like Saber Ward, which normally give an evasion boost to it. It costs a bit more, but it has a cooldown. It's part of one of my preferred things. And now we have to talk about Blade Barrage. At the start, this was an attack called Blade Dance. Channel for 3 seconds to deal 3 hits for a lot of damage. It was cool, it looked cool, and it was also terrible in PvP because it was a lot of damage. And so people would stun you or knock back you or just run away and you wouldn't get to get any of the advantages from it. You'd, you'd waste most of the ability. And it did still have the long cooldown. People hated it and uh, eventually the compl there were so many changes to try and fix it for the PvP scene. It gained the ability to avoid interruption. It gained a root effect under certain disciplines. It gained all sort. Of they moved the first hit of the com the second hit of the combo very early, so you dealt two thirds of the damage immediately. And yet, it still wasn't enough. And eventually, they just changed it to Blade Barrage, and I don't like that because it's not nearly as cool looking. Oh well. Resolute purges all incapacitating and movement impairing effects. This is actually very good. Stun is a very overused effect in this game, so having the ability to immediately opt out of it is nice. Just remember that it doesn't protect you from more crowd control. Force Kick is the interrupt skill. Kick the target, interrupt its current action, preventing the ability from being used for the next 4 seconds. It's pretty... A lot of the major bosses are going to have immunity to the effect. So, yeah, but in the smaller content, or in PvP, it is pretty important. Force Smite is a class buff. It has a cooldown of 6 seconds, but it applies for 60 minutes. Increases the target's melee, ranged, force, and tech bonus damage and healing for 60 minutes. If the target is a group member, all other group members are also affected. As you can see, I have a lot more than Force Might on my hotbar. It's because once you... Uh, if we open the, up my legacy right here... By completing Chapter 2, all of my characters are able to apply Force Might. It doesn't stack with the Sith Warrior version because it does exactly the same thing. It applies to all characters in the Legacy. So because I've completed all the stories, I have all the class buffs. We'll go into what the others do later. This is a quick travel, nothing important there. Introspection is an out of battle heal. Channel it and you get all your health back. Very nice. Rebuke is interesting. This is another defensive ability. Activating it reduces all damage taken by 20%, and if I take any damage, then I deal some damage back to them. The effect can't call for more than once every second. It lasts 6 seconds. But every time someone hits me, it refreshes to the 6 second duration. In total, it can't last longer than 30 seconds, and keep in mind it's a minute long. In PvP, this was a nightmare for dot classes because it would 
basically give you the 20% defense until that dot wore off. Diabolical, and probably the reason why Sentinel was one of the most awful classes to fight against in PvP. Or is another crowd control. It's an AoE can crowd control. Confound up to 8 nearby enemies, preventing all action for up to 6 seconds. Damage ends the effect prematurely. So, basically it's what they call a sleep, because it's a lot easier than the crowd control that breaks on contact, on damage taken, which is you know, in a lot of places. Pacify, I can't use on this operations training dummy because it's an ability that specifically is banned from being used on Operations bosses. Pacifies the target, reducing melee and ranged attack accuracy by 90%. This ability does not respect the global cooldown. So you're not going to use it on Operation bosses, you're going to do some really nasty things to anything below that. Because ranged and melee, that is a lot of the base attacks out there. And you can combine it with Saber Ward if you want. Then you've got, like, we have a 55% defense chance, they have a 90% accuracy penalty. They aren't going to hit you with any attacks in any of your base attacks. And then we have Dispatch, an execute skill. Throw main hand lightsaber at the target, healing the energy damage, only usable on targets below, at and below 30% max HP. We have false clarity over here. Consume all charges, so yeah, by using it, it goes down to zero. It starts at four, it recharges every 30 seconds, but only one charge, so you have to wait two minutes to get the full charges back. Basically, uh, yeah. Each time your each stack increases your next single target melee attack by 25%, consumed when you deal damage with these attacks. So it's a very basic damage boost. And here we have Blade Blitz. A basic movement ability, but it can be used to either move around, you can either use it to get around quickly, or you can use it to create some distance so you can use full sleep again. Very nice stat. And over here, we have Twin Saber Throw. Throw both light slavers in a straight line, dealing damage. Affected enemies are slowed for 50% and it hits all enemies in a 30 meter line in front of you. In a class that's normally about 10 meters range, or if you're generous, because most of the time it's 4 meters, that Twin Saber Throw is pretty useful. I remember it to building focus at some point, but maybe not here. Leg Slash is another crowd control. It slows the target and reduces healing they receive by 20%. Not useful in main most content where there aren't healers, but if you're dealing with someone who has annoying healing abilities, such as in the PvP, then it has its use. Force Camouflage is not as cool a stealth ability as it looks. Obscure yourself with the Force, becoming difficult to detect, reducing damage taken by 50%, granting immunity to controlling effects, and increasing movement speed. It lasts 4 seconds, dealing direct damage brings the effect prematurely. It's what's called a... So most cl all classes, basically, have a threat drop ability, and Force Camouflage is that for the Sentinel. Be nice to your tanks, use this if you're pulling aggro, don't expect them to do all the work for you. And mostly to round it off, we have Guarded by the Force. Reduce damage taken by 99% for 4 seconds. Originally, this actually had a health loss effect where... At the, so, at this, when you use it, you lose 50% of your current HP, but get the defensive buff. It made them a nightmare in PvP. 
everyone complained. So they changed it so you lose the health after the defensive buff wears off, and then everyone complained again because, like, <laughs> the healers would just in. It would give healers a really hard time trying to get you up. Like, why would the healer want to get you back up when you're just going to lose all their hard work? So eventually they got rid of that health the drop effect, and I can't say I'm sad about that. And finally, two more abilities that I need to go over, and I need foot well, three more. And I need a lot of more centering to go over it. So let's just get it back up again. Zen is the very first ability you get that consumes all your focus to do stuff. It's very nice. But there's actually two other abilities related to it. Transcendence over here requires and converts three stacks of centering to issue transcendence to you and your group members within 40 meters. Increasing movement speed by 50% and melee and range defense by 10%. Lasts 10 seconds. It's uh, an interesting ability. It might not find its way in a standard rotation, but it still has its uses. Over here, Valorous Call. Immediately build 30 stacks of centering. Very nice. And here's the thing that made all operation groups want to use you and want to have at least one sentinel in the group. Inspiration. Requires and converts 30 stacks of centering to inspire you and your operation group's members within 40 meters, increasing all damage and healing done by 10%. Lasts 10 seconds. It has a 5 minute cooldown though. And to make sure that you can't just fill your entire operation group with sentinels and chain all their inspirations together, using it inflicts you with depressed. Unable to regain inspiration or bloodthirst. Bloodthirst being the marauder version of this skill. So that's most of the abilities. Of the, that's the basics of Sentinel out of the way. Let's talk about how things get more complex. So we have disciplines for each advanced class. There are three. Usually one is a utility role and the other two are DPS roles. So some classes will have a tank role, others will have a healer, but you never have a class that has tank and healer. Sentinel is one of the two advanced classes that only has DPS effects, which means that you're definitely stuck with those DPS cues. Anyhow, let's look at them in more detail. The Watchman is a dot class. Their first skill is Force Mint, uh, Force Melt. Call on the power of the Force to build three focus and melt the target, causing it to burn for elemental damage over nine seconds. At level 11 in every class, you get an extra utility point, which can be spent here for things that won't directly increase your damage, but there are more interesting bon side bonuses that have unique applications. Some of them more for PvP, some more for specific single-player strategies. Yeah, look around, there's no real wrong answers, except contemplation down here. Reduce the cooldown of ore by 15 seconds, but when you use your when you use your heal over time introspection, you build centering. This allows you to start with Zen. Then immediately Valorous Call and go into Inspiration for a full party damage boost. It's frustratingly required. So, Burning Sweep. Reduce the cooldown of Force Sweep by 9 seconds and the focus consumed by 1. In addition, it deals 30% more damage and spreads your Cauterize and Force Melt burns to targets it hits if it hits someone already affected by those burns. Cauterize we'll get to in a bit. Force Melt builds an additional focus at level 16. At level 20, they reduce the cooldown by 3 seconds. At 24, critical strike damage of your burn effects increases by 5%. And 
Yeah, it doesn't seem to be showing what I want it to show, actually. Oh wait, that's because it's later on, never mind. Cauterize is learned at level 26. Strike the target for weapon damage, but then cause it to burn for 9 seconds for elemental damage. It requires two lightsabers. But you'd be missing... I can't really come up with a good reason for people not to have two lightsabers on a sentinel, because even if there weren't skills that required it, you'd be missing out on extra damage. Why would you not? Here, Juyo form. Utilize an offensive lightsaber form causing melee attacks to increase all damage dealt by 1% for 30 seconds. It stacks up to 5 times, but this uh, stack can't occur more than once every second. And it replaces Shi Cho form. And here's the thing. Look as you might. Look in the Jedi Knight bar. Oh, right. It, so, the thing is, this used to be a toggled skill. You'd drag it down to the bar, and the Shi Cho form would it be clicked on. If you were in a different discipline, then you'd just to click that form instead. The problem is that I guess they found it redundant, but also really hard to balance if people could just swap forms on the fly, so they just made them into passives, so this is stuff hidden inside your, your character abilities panel that you wouldn't find. Or rather, it's hard to find. And these forms actually affected your Zen skill. I'm just wondering where it says that here. Whatever. Anyway, Juyo form at level 28 will replace Shi Cho form, so you don't get the damage dealt and damage received by 3% bonus. Merciless Zeal. Your cauterize, overload saber, and force melt burns heal you for 15% of the damage they deal. So this is actually kind of a tanky, cl tanky discipline. You aren't going to survive actually pulling a boss's attention but you are able to heal off any of the splash damage you might take. Repelling blows. Increase direct damage dealt by 5%. Plasma Blade. Your burn effects have a 20% chance to build focus when deal damage, but they can't occur more than once every second. Merciless Slash. Strike the target with both light slavers for a lot of weapon damage, let's be honest. Each use grants is merciless for 30 seconds, lowering the cooldown of your next merciless slash by 1.5 seconds. Stacks up to 3 times, requires 2 lightsabers. So, this sort of feels like it's just here to fill in a slot because everything else is burn based, but this is just a basic straight out physical attack. Juyo Mastery. Your burn effects are 1% more likely to critically hit per stack of Juyo form, and Zen, the effects of Zen, are modified. So at the moment, it generates a lot of fo up to 12 focus by activating it. Let's just uh, jump into this form and see what it changes. Zen requires and converts 30 stacks of centering to enter a Zen state Increasing the critical chance of your burns by 100% and causing burn damage to heal your group for 1% of max health. So, yeah, this did actually make you a bit of a cluck. Like I said earlier, you aren't going to replace a healer or a tank, but you're going to help out. And that's all pretty cool stuff in my books. Anyhow, we want to get out of this again. And go in for a closer look. Mind Seer. Your burning effects have a 20% chance to grant Mind Seer, which increases the damage of your next Twin Saber throw by 100%. This can only occur once every 18 seconds. At level 52, you can now get 6 stacks of Juyo form, and Mercy Silas Slash can stack up to 4 times. I'm looking the wrong way because it goes back and forth. Overload Saber. Charge your lightsaber with deadly energy for 15 seconds, causing your next 3 successful melee attacks to make the target burn over 6 seconds. 
This effect cannot be applied more than once per second and stacks up to three times. Blazing Ward, dealing burn damage increases your damage reduction for three seconds. Geoform and Merciless build two stacks at a time. In addition, Merciless Slash has a 50% chance to build Accelerating Victory, increasing the damage of your next slash or dispatch by 5% per stack. Stacks up to two times. And then we have, for, to cap it off, Smoldering Burns. Merciless Slash increases burn damage you deal by 3% for 4.5 seconds after use. So yeah, it's very much a burn effect deck, and I feel the need to point out Sith Marauder is technically the mirror class, but every now and then you have little differences. One of them is that, whereas the Watchman discipline is all about inflicting burns, the Marauder is all about inflicting bleeds. Functionally, they do exactly the same thing, because any sort of defenses towards elemental damage are identically potent at protecting from internal damage, which is bleeds, and vice versa. Honestly, I've played through the whole game and I've only ever seen one very niche enemy have an elemental resistance, but not an internal damage resistance. And after all that, I need to double check that there isn't something else that I've forgotten. I mean, dual wield, yes. We dual wield. That was never up for question. Valor. I don't remember when you get this, but uh, it increases the centering you build by 2 and reduces the cooldown of Valorous Call by 30 seconds. Nothing too important. So, let's have a skip over to the... Combat is what I want to finish with, so we'll get to that later, but... Concentration is actually interesting because originally it was called Focus and it was also shared with the Jedi Guardian, your other mirror class. See, originally the skill tree, we originally had skill trees, not disciplines, and the rightmost skill tree was always shared between the classes, but I guess that turned out to be obnoxious to try and balance, so eventually they split them up. Technically, if you're familiar with one, it won't take too long to adjust to the other. They do roughly the same thing, it's just that you'll notice a lot more little different... You'll, if you're an expert, then you'll notice a lot of little differences here and there. But you'll also see the roots of it. that ability was part of a mixed class, because even on the single saber-wielding Jedi Guardian, all the abilities that say strikes with both weapons with dual-wielding here We'll say the same thing there. Anyway, let's start from the top. Focused Burst. Blast the enemy target with a powerful burst of force energy, dealing kinetic damage. Swelling Winds. Increase the damage dealt by Force Sweep by 40% and reduce the cooldowns of Force Sweep and Focused Burst by 3 seconds each. Chi Cho Mastery. Increase armor penetration by 15% and Force Attack damage by 3%. Saber Strength. Increase the damage you deal with Saber Attacks by 5%. Fervor. Increase Critical Strike damage of all attacks by 10%. Zealous Sleep. Now this one is interesting because right here, if we look at our Force Sleep ability, cannot be used against targets in cover. So many forms of gap closers or pull abilities or things like that have the caveat of you can't use this against targets in cover. And uh, something I should have pointed out earlier, there's a 10 meter minimum range on this. So once I get close to the target, I can't leap. Now look at Zilla's leap again. Leap to target, dealing damage and immobilizing the target for a second can be used while immobilized, strikes with both weapons if dual wielding. It has a focus cost, but it says nothing about people in cover. You can use this to... This class, this discipline, I need to be straight up front, is all about using leaps 
to charge up your, the power of your next attack. So having a one that works even on covered targets, and even when immobilized, and in close range, that's a very important part of your rotation. Level 28. Momentum. Reduce cooldown of zealous sleep and causes force sleep or zealous sleep to make your next blade storm deal 5% damage and generate focus instead of consuming it. 32. Strike, zealous strike, slash, cyclone slash, blade storm, dispatch, and concentrated slice reduce the active cooldowns of force sweep, focus burst, and zealous sleep by a second. That's a lot of abilities to reduce that cooldown. Felling Blow. Force Sleep and Zealous Sleep make your next Force Sweep or Focus Burst an automatic critical hit. And suddenly this uh, discipline found its identity because this was just basically one thing. Leap in. Force Sweep. It's a crit, it's an AoE, it's making everyone unhappy in PvP. Unfortunately, this is definitely a class that worked better in the Guardian rather than the Sentinel because of... Well, we'll see what it's like when we get to that class of video. But even so, it's not saying that Sentinel is bad with it. It's more saying that the Guardian can do it so much better. Heightened Power. Increase all damage dealt by 5 seconds for 6 seconds after dealing damage with Force Sweep or Focused Burst. You can only do this once every 8 seconds. Force Exhaustion. Progressively slow the target from 50% to 5% movement speed over 3 seconds and deal additional kinetic damage each second. At the end of the duration, the target takes additional damage. So yeah, this is at a decentish range and it's uh, actually another important part of the puzzle. Because Zen and Force Exhaustion grant Cohen, increasing the damage dealt by your next Force Sweep or Focus Burst by 15% and making them consume no focus. So that's another thing that makes Force Sweep uh, an overpowered attack. Force Exhaustion triggers Gravity Vortex, granting an immunity to interrupts and all controlling effects for 6 seconds. This can't occur more than once every 30 seconds. Additionally, each consume one less focus. Well, Zealous Sleep and Force Exhaustion. I, like I said, we don't have any interruptible abilities anymore. So I don't get the reason for that, but, eh. 52. Increase Decisive Slashes. Increase critical strike damage of Slash, Cyclone Slash, Dispatch, and Concentrated Slice by 5%. In addition, Blade Barrage builds one centering each time it deals damage to a target, even during Zen. Keep in mind that it actually hits three times. It's not mentioned in the ability itself, but I remember very clearly that's how it works. Force Flagellation. Slash and Cyclone Slash deal additional force energy damage. So they deal extra damage and it's considered force damage. In addition, damage dealt by Force Sweep and Focus Burst overwhelms the target, and Overwhelmed is basically a debuff like a Zealous Strike. Hitting them with it will increase... Uh, there are other sources for this effect. They don't stack, they, uh, they basically reset the duration. But it's even more damage taken from Force Sweep. Concentrated Slice. Slice the target for weapon damage. Attacks with both weapons if dual wielding. Yeah, like I said for Merciless Slash, Concentrated Slice just feels there to be there. Concentrated Slice grants Concentrated Defense, increasing defense chance by 10% for 6 seconds. Not the worst thing you could have. Concentrated Slice now build grants centered focus, increasing critical damage bonus for the next Force Sweep or Focus Burst by 15% because we need to make Force Sweep even stronger. Burning Slice, increased damage dealt by Blade Barrage, or rather, damage dealt by Blade Barrage, stacks a burning effect on the target that builds up to 3 charges and deals ooh, significant elemental damage over 9 seconds. And yes, on the Sith Marauder, this would be a bleed. 
So, the thing is that we didn't even have concentrated slice at the start of the game. This was just a jump in, force and sweep, hit everyone for massive de burst damage. It was a very nasty thing to come up against in PvP, let me tell you. And when they went for the whole disciplines thing, they added they always had to have four skills. And I guess they decided let's give them a single target attack so they don't suck in operations and everywhere else outside of hitting lots of people in here in PvP or trash mobs. But Watchmen is my favorite, and it's also going to be the introduction of a new, slightly annoying mechanic for swapping around disciplines. Anyhow, step, uh, not watchman, combat. Lance, spear the target with both lightsabers, dealing weapon damage and hindering the target for 1.5 seconds. Permanent use of high mobility actions and escapes. Requires two lightsabers. And honestly, this just feels like it's thrown in here just so that they can delay giving you skills until you get a taru form. Utilize an acrobatic lightsaber form. Increasing alacrity by 3%. In addition, successful melee attacks have a 20% chance to trigger a second strike that deals you know, relatively you know, unimpressive damage. It can't occur more than once every 1.5 seconds. And it's an offhand attack, I believe. So you want to take, make sure that you focus on your offhand saber for this one. And accuracy, because there's a lot of melee attacks in here. Ataru Savvy. Cyclone Slash triggers in a four Ataru Form strike on every target it hits. Very nice for the Ataru Form discipline. Dual Wield Mastery. Increase the damage dealt with offhand lightsaber attacks by 25%. Ataru Mastery. Increases the damage dealt by your triggered Ataru form by 5%. In addition, the effects of your Zen ability are modified. We will get to that later. This is the this is what should come early in Ataru form, but they can't because they didn't have Ataru form yet. Strike the target with both weapons for weapon damage and automatically trigger an Ataru form strike, bypassing the rate limit. For six seconds after using Blade Rush, your Ataru form has an extra 30% chance to be triggered, requires two lightsabers. It replaces Slash. Very important to keep that in mind. Righteous Zeal. Reduce the cooldown of Zealous Strike by 3 seconds. Excise. Lance sunders the target for 45 seconds, reducing armor rating by 20%. This is a buff that is refreshed, not stacked. Debuff that's refreshed, not stacked by having multiple people with this effect. Opportune Attack. Dealing damage with a Taru Form Strike grants Opportune Attack, making your next Blade Storm or Clashing Blast deal 5% more damage. Combat Trance. When Opportunity is consumed, you build focus. Precision. Gain two stacks of Precision, gaining up to lasting up to 10 seconds. And it lists a whole bunch of abilities. Clashing Blast, Lance, Dispatch, Blade Barrage, Blade Rush, Force Sweep, and Cyclone Slash. All of these gain 100% armor penetration and consumes one stack of precision. It requires two lightsabers. And keep in mind that it's a bit hard to figure out where, but... Uh, well, actually, no, I should start from the beginning. Originally, this was an attack. And it would give you the precision buff for a few seconds. But PvP happened. People would stun you during precision or just crowd control you or just do anything to get out of your way and you'd miss your chance to get the full damage of it. So it became an off the global cooldown attack. And it still wasn't working out for them. So eventually they just changed it into a buff. But because of how Zen works, we're going to have to go into that and a little caveat here later. Level 44, Immaculate Force, Opportune Attack, now additionally increases the critical chance of Blade Storm and Clashing Blast by 100%. Saber Screen, dealing damage with an Ataru Form Strike increases your damage reduction and defense chances by 2%. It stacks up to 3 times and lasts 10 seconds. 
Swift Blades reduce the cooldown of Blade Storm and Clashing Blast by 3 seconds and the focus they consume by 1. Hand of Justice, dealing damage with an Ataru form of strike triggers Hands of Justice, finishing the cooldown on Dispatch and you can use Dispatch on a target of any health level without consuming focus. It can't occur more than once every 20 seconds, so your Execute skill gets a lot more use than other classes we'll see, or at least other disciplines here. And Clashing Blast, unleash a powerful blast of force energy at the target, dealing energy damage, it stuns standard and weak enemies for 5 seconds, it replaces Blade Storm. Which is why there's a lot of things that say it works for Blade Storm or Clashing Blast. You can't have both at once. Force Health. Increased damage reduction by 2% and Saber Throw builds focus, so that's why I was confused a bit earlier. Efficient Strikes. While Zen is active, Blade Rush and Cyclone Slash consume one less focus. And finally, increased greater strike damage bonus of Blade Rush and Classing Blast by 15%. So you remember how we have Opportune and Strike? It increases damage dealt, but it also gives us 100% crit chance? Yeah, this is where we're going to expect a lot of our damage to come. It's basically... Clashing Blast is going to be your really big hitter that you want to weave into your, into your precision window. And with all of that said, uh, this is the one I want to show, so let's commit to the combat. Our utility points, we have to start at the top. Increase damage dealt by rebuke by 15% and its duration by 4 seconds. Generate focus when stunned, mobilized, put to sleep or knocked around, and reduces the cooldown of the resolute by 30 seconds. I want to take this one because of what I'm doing to show this off in proper for combat. Cyclone Slash deals 25% more damage, Blade Barrage, Immobilize of the Target, a PvP useful skill. Originally this was Blade Dance. Defensive Roll, reduces damage taken from AoE by 30% and Internal Elemental by 3%. A lot of slow effects on a lot of abilities. While Rebuke is active, generates one focus whenever you are attacked. This can't occur more than once every 2 seconds. And Stoic. Increase your damage reduction by 2%, you build 2 centering when attacked. The centering can't occur more than once every 1.5 seconds, but more centering is always good. Watchguard. Reduce pacifier's cooldown by 15 seconds and increases range by 6 meters. Force kick is reduced by 2 seconds and rebuke can be used while stunned. Force Fade, increase your movement speed by 15% and the movement speed bonus of Force Camo by 20%. Increase duration by 2 seconds. Arda, Transcendence no longer requires or consumes centering, but it goes on cooldown when activated. You can reduce the cooldown of Force Stasis by 15 seconds, that's your crowd control. Increase the range of leg slash to 10 meters. It now costs less, two less focus and it immobilizes the target for 3 seconds, but it can't be applied to the same target more than once every 10 seconds. Well, the immobilize anyway. Force Camouflage removes all cleansable effects when activated. Now this I have a story about in PvP. I was close to hitting an objective, but I got rooted down somewhere dangerous. I used Force Camouflage to get rid of the effect, and I lost the hot ball. Because the hot ball is dropped when you go into stealth. It's obnoxious that this is the only class where the remove cleanse is tied into the perfect stealth. You can increase the duration of guard by the force for 2 seconds and to reduce its cooldown. Each use of your strike, zealous strike or leg slash reduces the active cooldown of rebuke by 3 seconds. So, out of everything I want to get the force kick reduction and honestly I don't really PvP so I can just go for the cleanse you have to take three skillful utilities to get into masterful you have to take three masterful utilities to get into heroic 
When transcendence is applied or reflected, it purges movement impairing effects, and it increases the movement speed of transcendence. We have to take contemplation because it builds centering out of combat. Blade bit blitz can be used while immobilized, purges movement and impairing effects when activated, and deals 50% more damage, so... We have two ways of getting rid of the movement impairing effects alongside Force Camouflage being able to remove it uh, completely. Given how much of Sentinel relies on close range, that makes sense. Saber Ward grants immunity to stun, sleep, lift, and incapacitating effects for 6 seconds. Getting attacked while it's active heals you for 3% of maximum health. This can't occur more than once per second. Inspiration generates 12 focus when activated. You heal for 1% of your maximum health whenever you activate an ability that consumes focus. Dispatch refunds 2 focus when used on a target affected by pacify. You can use it on any target affected by pacify. Additionally, Pacify grants a zealous judgment, reducing the damage you take from force and tech by 75%. That is significant. But it also has no use in operations because operation bosses can't be pacified. While force camouflage is active, you gain hidden advance every 5 seconds. Each charge increases damage dealt by your next melee attack by 4%. Stacks up to 12 charges, lasts up to 6 seconds after exiting Force Camouflage. It's an interesting way of bolstering your attack in exchange for not being able to hit the people because Force Camouflage is broken if you directly damage someone. And you can get an extra charge on Force Sleep. I feel like Fleet Footed and Inspired Focus are the things that I want to go to. But yeah, and here's the thing, when if you go out of your class, basically all the new abilities will be added to the earliest available quick slot, which is a problem when you swap for disciplines a lot because you have to keep putting them back in place. And if, some, if an ability replaces another, then those can also get shuffled out of order. It is annoying. And rather than just beating up the operations training dummy to show how this plays in real world, I'm going to go to a Rikon. We have our friend we have our friendly Astromech here to heal us. Let's go to somewhere a bit risky so that we can show off what this is like in a more intense fight. So then, the way this works, build up centering out of combat. Oh, I didn't show what Zen does. Zen in combat, in the combat discipline. Grants 30% alacrity, lasts for 6 seconds, each attack consuming 1 charge. An additional stack of precision, so this is armor penetration for 100%, is granted if precision is used during Zen. Alacrity is your attack, is your global cooldown speed, so you're going to get to move a lot faster during this. Well, not so much move as attack faster, but. Same difference. And I don't want to talk on a subject that I'm not too authorized to talk in about here, but there's one thing that everybody agrees on, and that's that if you are a combat sentinel or the Carnage Marauder, its Marauder counterpart, you need to get the tactical Fanged God form. Using Blade Rush adds hyperstacks to you, increasing crit chance, reducing the cost of Blade Rush by one focus per stack. It stacks up to 3 times, lasts 10 seconds or until you deal damage with an ability other than Blade Rush. So let's pick a fight with this Red Commander, because he's going to be rough. Here's the thing, a lot of the bosses around here are very... 
champions, really. They're very fond of crowd control, especially crowd control on your companion. So you can expect your tank to run out of it. Them to start ignoring your tank or to suddenly run out and not get the healing you're expecting. Basically, combat is all about here. Let's keep using Blade Rush and getting all those offhand attacks. Yeah, just look at all this crowd control they're going through. I would... I should probably show the other disciplines then. But I'd have to... Hmm. Alright. Annihilation. And excuse me while I put everything quickly back into its proper place. Yeah, there you can see the way the problems start with all this. So, our Watchman's Dial, named after an actual class in the early Knights of the Old Republic stuff. Originally, your cauterize ability did had a cooldown, but it was actually re people pointed out how obnoxious it is to deal with this in any sort of group content when you're trying to clear out trash mobs, so eventually they made it that it done. They also baked the crowd control slow effect into it, and that made it a bit trickier to deal with. So eventually they took the cooldown off it completely and it gave it that force sweep spreads the burn around, but they added a limit to the slow effect on it. Uh, let's pick a nasty fight, how about it? Yeah, we have two elites and a couple of adds. This is a pretty hard fight. The idea is to always keep that uh, merciless slash on cooldown, but also keep uh, critting those burns. The more people you have with burns on, the better. The thing is, this isn't really the character that I use this on. If I could find a champion, I'd show off a bit. If I could find one of the local champions, I'd show it off. But as it is, uh, nobody's in the proximity for me to beat up. So, next discipline. Concentration. And once again, we have to put everything back in its proper place. Force exhaustion. Don't get why Blade Blitz moved. Because I moved it, obviously. So then, we leap in. We need force exhaustion, but I've already forgotten where I put it. Yeah. 
it deals a lot of burst damage in that one force sweep, you have to admit. The thing is, I feel like a lot of it, well, the, the adjustments to Sentinel, are simply things of you need to make it as good as Guardian. You need to give it the thing, tools that Guardian has that Sentinel doesn't. And it just gets out of hand. It only does one thing, and that's Force Sweep or Focused Burst, but it does it pretty damn well. Anyway, that is the Sentinel. I'm going to show off all the other classes. Why do you even think I wouldn't? Until next time, but... Oh! Okay, let's see how this works here, even though I've got oh, everything in the wrong place. If I don't like his ability and I don't have Horse Kick, I can use a crowd control to break him out of it. Yeah, this is the problem. Sentinel relies a lot on it. To having the centering to do what the Guardian has by default. Crowd control is real here. Yeah, this isn't my usual class, so of course I'm not the best at it, but yeah! Stay tuned for more of these infomercials on the, each of the advanced classes as they are now. And I'm probably going to put up on screen when it comes to each part what the Marauder counterpart for each ability is. So, until next time guys, take care, and see you all around.